Hello there, I'm John Benderwaffles Aljets, and today we're doing a speed development commentary on the No Name Town. Uh, this was a speed development that I released a few weeks back, back in December. I made it during a live stream. Uh, and we're just gonna, we're gonna take a look at it and I'm gonna give you some thoughts on the design process and also we're gonna talk a little bit about the tile set that I use in it and just other like general stuff. So let's, let's go ahead and let's dive into it and, uh, let's see how this goes. So yes, yeah, so obviously this is using RPG Maker XP. I'm starting out uh, using a modified Gen 3 tile set, the modified tile set that came with Essentials. Uh, I've swapped the buildings out for buildings that I created by modifying uh, pre-existing buildings within the Gen 3 uh, tile set and also like, you know, just doing some very basic pixel art stuff. I'm still learning pixel art, so it's, it's you know, rough stuff, but it is what it is. So I wanted to create like a very basic town. And when I'm making those, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll start with the layout. I'll start with the roads, kind of get a general feel for how I want things to flow. And then I'll go from there. The Poke Center is also probably one of the most important when you're designing a town in the Pokemon style. It is probably the most important building to place down. So you want to do that early. I like, especially in what I'm imagining to be like a super early town, like I'm kind of envisioning this either being the first the first big city so the first gym or maybe like second you know something like that uh so i want the the poke center to be very visible as soon as you get into town and honestly that's just a good design uh sort of guideline with pokemon maps in general is just you want the pokemon center to be probably the the easiest to find for the player you want it to be sort of this this thing that they don't really have to think about where it is. They just, they just know they are, they're able to find it super quickly. Um, so I like to place down the Pokemon center first. And in this case, I place it down as literally the first thing that you will see when you walk into the city, like you, you get into this town, the Pokemon center is just right there. And I want to talk about the actual design of the Pokemon center, uh, tiles. If you noticed, you saw me kind of playing with different parts of uh, different pieces of a Pokemon Center. I'm designing this tile set, and this is this is a very rough version. All of these tiles are probably going to get swapped out for new ones down the line, but this is part of my learning process of making tiles. Uh, I wanted all my tiles for all of my buildings to be as modular as possible. It's It just sort of helps with my creativity to be able to sort of flex and change and play with things as I'm building. So I've made all of my buildings with, you know, different parts that, you know, might be used on one map. They might not, you know, and just, it allows me to get some more variation in the buildings. Uh, because one thing about Pokemon maps is that, you know, we're used to the Pokemon Center looking exactly the same in every single town, and that it, there is like a good design reason for that. Um, it makes it very quick to identify just at a glance. But in reality, you're not going to have, you know, in in normal life, you're not going to have the same exact building in every single town. Although that being said, uh, pretty much every Pizza Hut growing up looked exactly the same and every McDonald's growing up looked exactly the same, but that's that's beside the point. That's like a corporate branding thing. But I wanted there to be some variation to buildings such as the Pokemon Center, variations to buildings such as uh, the Mart. I, with this version of the tile set, I didn't design there to be any variation to the gyms, but that is something that I would probably think of. Uh, while there is some variation of the gyms that, that there's different roof colors, uh, because that is sort of a, a, a Pokemon design element from the earliest generations, uh, is that towns all have uniform, uh, roof colors for the most part, or some unifying color scheme that ties them all together. And the gym is usually included in that. Uh, unlike the Pokemon Center and the Mart, which have their sort of own 
bespoke colors that they always have. Uh, so I guess the variation does come from the roof color on the gym. Uh, so if you see the, the Mart also has the, the different like modular pieces and the actual buildings in the town do as well. Uh, I like to be able to have some variation in how the buildings look while still fitting into the sort of uniform look uh, that the town needs. So they these particular buildings, I don't think that I included them, but sometimes uh, for these modular parts of these buildings, I will also include uh, like different elements that can sort of help vary up the buildings. If you look through the tile set as we're going through, uh, you'll see that some of the buildings include like, like, you know, roof, like air conditioner units on top, or uh, let's see if we can find another example here. Um, do, 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 do. Trying to find a good point to freeze to show you an example of like a roof with a chimney that is one that I could include. Just scrubbing through. We have different variations on a lab building. As I said, there's that, there's the air conditioner uh, rooftop piece that would allow for this style of building to have a uh, rooftop air conditioner going through. I'm sure I looked through the tile set enough that I could find that. But anyways, that's beside the point. The, the idea is just, I want some variation in my buildings. I want them to look and feel different from each other while still fitting in within the individual towns. So when I'm designing a tile set that is something that i'm that i keep in mind and that i that i try to incorporate into the designs uh going through here i i wanted this town needed some sort of identity and at first i was like okay maybe this is gonna be the flower town so i put in this sort of flowery patch mostly just to fill up space because i didn't want to just have like a big block of trees there i find that with my designs i tend to gravitate towards just filling in things with trees uh, which I I is a nasty habit that I'm trying to break. I don't want to do that as much as I do. Um, I want to be able to have some more variation to things. So another thought that I had was, well, maybe this uh, maybe this area has a rocky some rocky elements to it. Uh, maybe this town is at like the base of a mountain or something. So there's going to be some like stone elements to it. And I was like, you know what? Maybe there's like an underground like cave system underneath this town. And that's why I put in, uh, an entrance to that cave. So I, I, I built this rock formation and I was like, okay, I feel like, you know, as I'm going through and detailing here, you'll see that I sort of decide that I want, I want more of that rocky element. So I actually put in a second uh, rock mound as I'm sitting here designing trees and doing what I said I'm trying to move away from, which is just having blocks of trees. But there we are with a big old block of trees. But notice that, you know, the, the flowery patch helps fill that out a little bit and helps make it feel not so samey. And I decide I'm going to put in another uh, sort of flowery bit there just to sort of further that uh, visual thematic. Um, and I'm playing with fences here just to sort of see like, well, does this, does this gel? Does this give me the good vibe that I want? Um, and I ultimately decided, no, I wanted to sort of reduce the, the fencing a little bit because it felt very restricting. Um, and then I go ahead and I fill it in with trees. So, you know, what do I know? <laughs> uh, but it's a little bit more of a natural element, I suppose. Uh, so going through and just kind of working on the flow a little bit. Uh, and here we are, we're gonna put in this, this secondary rock formation here in a moment. Uh, do, 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 do. There it is. So in my head, I was like, okay, so there's gonna be this underground stone, like cave system kind of thing. So we have an entrance, we have an exit. So I, I go ahead and I put in the, the quote unquote exit here. And I'm like, okay, but I don't want people going in the out hole. Uh, so I put in some trees and then I put in a ledge and make it so that you can only come out that one way. Um, whenever I ultimately decide to put the ledge in here, which should be here in a moment. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So now you can only come out that hole. You can't ever go in. And I put in a little bit of grass, which is not usually an element that you see in, in towns. They don't, Game Freak didn't really like putting grass in towns and have you actually be able to encounter 
wild Pokemon in a town. But I figured, you know what? Why not? Let's let's go for it and let's do it. Throwing in some rock details, and there is the final map. There is our no-name town. Uh, if I was using this in a proper game, I would obviously have a name for this town, but I don't because I was just like, you know what? I'm just playing with the tiles and I'm just designing some things. So this is giving you kind of a, a general idea of when it comes time to design the tile set for the game project that we're going to be working on as part of the tutorial series, uh, some of the some of the things that I'm going to be taking into consideration while designing the tile set. Modularity is king. It's going to be one of the biggest parts of the design process because I, as a map maker, want to be able to uh, do things with as few restrictions as possible. And I want to be able to make things look exactly how I want them to look. And I want you guys, when you're using the tile set, to be able to do that as well. So that is something that I'm going to be keeping in mind. Um, you know, just to make it the best that I can possibly make it. So yeah, this was No Name Town. I hope that you enjoyed my sort of thought processes on on it while going through. I uh, didn't really talk about the map too much, but it's a pretty simple map. As I said, it's a very, very simplistic starting town. Um, yeah, and so there doesn't need to be a ton of elements to it, but there do there does need to be something to make it memorable, and I feel like the the cave system and the flowers and everything like that gives it enough of a visual identity to make it something that you're going to be able to remember what this town is just based off of someone describing it, which is one of those things that you want when in in an RPG when you're designing a town, you want people to be able to when they're discussing it, even if they don't know the name of the town they can describe it and you're going to know exactly what they're talking about. It's just a, a a good sort of rule of thumb for design. Anyways, if you like this video, be sure to like it. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. I think only about 50% of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So it'd be really great if we could uh, sort of bump that number up a little bit. And uh, with that, I will leave you and hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you later.